Hey everyone, Chris here with another filler video to fill out the year, and I'm going to answer the burning question on everyone's mind right now. I am going to get my hair cut soon. Okay, but in all seriousness, there were a few things that came up in the past couple months, so I just want to quickly talk about them before we end things off and continue with Ancient DOS games as usual, so let's get to it. First, let's start with the Ancient DOS game schedule. As usual, it's going to be the first three Saturdays of every month that's going to have a video for January through October, I almost said August, and does, there'll be another 25 regular episodes, and of course after every five regular episodes, there'll be a filler. So that'll bring us to episode 250 in October, which is a lot of eight episodes. Now I do have some ideas for how to make Ancient DOS games a little different going into season six in 2019. It's not going to be like any super major changes, more a matter of finding a way of being able to revisit games that I've talked about before without like doing like full episodes on them. I have some ideas that I hope will work out, but we'll see how that goes. The thing is, I'm not going to do it this year because I just want to get my footing with the new approach that I'm taking with adding a little more humor to the videos. So that's going to be the focus for 2018, and then we'll go on from there. Now let's talk about Patreon support. So, as I'm sure a number of you noticed during December, Patreon decided to try and enact some fee changes. And what they were planning to do, basically, was shift the fees that creators were paying over to the supporters while adding it on as an extra fee that they had to pay. Suffice to say, a lot of supporters and even pretty much every creator out there didn't like those changes. <laughs> so thankfully, Patreon decided, hey, we're going to actually listen to the perhaps 99% of people not okay with this and not go through with these changes. So right now, everything is the same as always on Patreon, but this experience did leave a lot of people soured. But I feel there's something I should point out about this that maybe not a lot of people are aware of, but the fees that are going on are kind of omnipresent. Like, I mean, the way it works right now is that I currently lose about 14% of what I get in Patreon support to fees. Now, 5% goes to Patreon themselves, while 9% goes to the payment processors. So Patreon doesn't even see that money. And I should also point out quickly that the number that you see on my Patreon support page, that's actually the number after fees. So it's actually much, it's actually like around $600 where I'm at right now, once you, before you take the fees into account. But here's the thing though, is that some people were saying, well, I'll just go use a different service or something. Well, first of all, which service? But second of all, even if you did that, you're still gonna be stuck with the payment processor fees and whatever cut that this different service is gonna take anyway, so what are you really accomplishing? Like, I mean, that's the thing, is that the, what Patreon is doing, they're doing it pretty well. Like, I mean, notwithstanding these sort of hiccups and <laughs> trying to enact new policies to make things better and just make things worse in the process, so... Like, I mean, just to give you another example, when somebody donates on my Twitch streams, I lose about 10% of that to fees. So if somebody gives me $5 on a Twitch stream, I only see $4.50 of that. Like, the fees are omnipresent. You just can't get away from them. Patreon tried to make it so that creators could get away from them, but they screwed up in the process. So it's a good thing that they realized that and decided not to go through with those changes. And speaking of, let's touch on the live streams for a moment here, because one of the questions I get asked sometimes is how to directly support me without having to make a monthly Patreon pledge. And the method I used to say in the past was go buy my games, because I do still have them for sale on my website. It's just some people aren't going to want to go through the share it processor, or some people don't want to purchase a game that they can't play because their system's too new and they don't want to go through the hassle of trying to make it work because they're really old games. But the other thing though, is that if you make a donation on the Twitch stream, like the Twitch stream doesn't have to be active to use that donation button. So, and the other thing too is that there's supposed to be like alerts that pop up on the stream when a donation or such does go through, but I can, make those alerts replay anytime I want. 
So even if you are worried that you're like not going to get an alert and not get your message read on stream or something like that, you don't have to worry about that, because the next time I stream, I'll just pull up any notifications that were missed and just show them that way. So that's something you can do if you don't want to do like a monthly pledge or something, and but you still want to give like some extra support, just do it that way through the donation button on the Twitch stream, whether it's live or not. And again, one of the best ways you can support me isn't financially, it's by like using social media to spread the word about the show to get more people interested in it, like retweeting the episode notifications or just telling other people about the show, like watch this channel because this guy talks about DOS games and DOS games are fun, like that kind of stuff. So that means a lot to me too. So that's the, one of the best ways you can support the show if you don't want to do anything financial. Oh yeah, let's actually talk about the YouTube notifications for a moment. One of the things that came up during October is that some people weren't getting the notifications for my videos, like the YouTube notifications. And at first I thought maybe it was something related to mature videos or something, but apparently a number of people are not getting notifications for any of my videos. So one of the things to remember is that YouTube does have a sort of bell icon thing you can click on to get like special notifications that come in on like the notifications thing so you don't have to go to your subscriptions list or something. But the other thing to keep in mind too is that despite the fact that the YouTube notifications have been broken and not working for some people, I always have tweets go out for every video that goes up on YouTube. So if you're worried that you're missing the YouTube notifications, just follow me on Twitter. I, I mean, like, if you want to. <laughs> Because I know Twitter can be a bit of a mess sometimes to try and figure out like who's posted what, especially if you're following tons of people, but that's an option too, I'm just saying. Now let's talk about some game development. So if you have been following me on Twitter, you may have noticed that I posted a couple things lately which were showing some stuff that I've been working on in terms of making games. And I'm going to show that stuff on screen right now too, just so everybody gets a chance to see this. Basically, what I've been doing, because I mentioned before that I kind of fell out of favor with the Saluminite project because it wasn't really something that I really wanted to play the finished product of. So I've been going back to one of my old ideas, specifically the one that I was working on before I did Text Mode 2000 stuff, which was Ivixcape, previously known as Vector Zone. And what I'm doing now is. Part of the reason I abandoned that project was because the design just wasn't working out. I had all these different features I wanted in it, and it just became a sort of mess. Nothing gelled together well. So what I've done, now that I have a game engine that I can work with, specifically the Godot engine, I've gone back to the old design, I've basically stripped every single mechanic out of it, I've turned it into a 3D game as opposed to a 2D game, and I'm now focusing on just one particular mechanic that I think is going to be very interesting. And I'm going to, I'm basically just taking that mechanic and running with it, just doing as much as I can with it. So I'm hoping this works out. I've put, as I said, I've posted some preliminary stuff over on Twitter as to the stuff that I've been doing. I don't have a timetable as to when I'm going to be able to get something out for people to play because I'm still just working on like just pieces of it first so that I can put it all into the Godot engine and you know see if it actually works properly but I am hoping to get something going soon and the ultimate goal is to make it so that people who are pledging four dollars of support or more on Patreon will be given access to the alphas and betas for whatever I produce and my goal with the, with actually producing this game is to make it progressively because since I have an engine to work with, it should be possible to de develop it in such a way that every step of the way basically makes it so that players can get further and further in the game. So that's what I'm hoping to do, is make it so that as the game develops, the players can get further in it, and then by the time the game is finished, players are able to finish the game. That's the plan anyways. I don't know how well it's gonna work, but we'll see. And I should, I should warn everybody, the very first alpha that goes out, like, three or four months from now, maybe longer, it really depends, but the very first alpha that goes out is probably going to be, like, ten minutes of gameplay, so fair warning about that. 
but that's where I'm at right now. Hopefully it goes well. And then the last thing to talk about is the Patreon milestone video. I know this is running really freaking late, but I just haven't had the time to work on it. I've been doing like, okay. So normally November and December are busy months for me, which is why I tend to take that time off to do other things. But the filler videos took a lot more effort than I thought they were going to. And I've still been doing shovelware diggers the whole time, still been doing the live streams, and then throw in all the game design work on top of that. I just haven't had the time to work on the milestone video. I still have all the questions re ready to answer. It's just, ugh. I don't know how some people do it sometimes, putting out daily videos and stuff. It's crazy how much work goes into all this. In any case, my hope is to get the milestone video done the next time I have like a two week gap in a month for doing whatever, which is going to be March. I'll try to get it done sooner if I can find the time to do it, but that would probably be the latest, would be the end of March for getting it out, which I know is really late for a milestone video, but what are you going to do? And that's all for this filler video. So stay tuned for the next episode of Ancient DOS Games, which will be episode 226 on Saturday, January 6th, which is next Saturday. As for the game I'll be covering, it's one of the very first vehicular driving games with a first person view. Now, if you think you know which game that might be, be sure to send your guests to ADG at pixelships.com and stay tuned because this is a game we've been wanting to cover for a while. Sort of. Actually, I'm not really looking forward to this. The game hasn't aged well. Thanks for watching, everyone, and extra special thanks to those of you supporting me on Patreon. Here's just a small sample of you guys.